this is a young girl with a, a sort of a corneal dystrophy, a nodular corneal dystrophy with a hypermature cataract, unfortunately in both eyes. In fact, we had already operated the other eye and then we uh, took up this eye for surgery as well. So initially I am doing a superficial keratectomy. Mind you, this girl is only in her early 20s and such a waste of so many blind years. Uh, and incidentally, she has also got a pathological myopia. She needs, I think, a four or five diopter lens. We implanted a six. Uh, due to economic reasons, we have put in a 5.2 PMMA uh, lens. And here initially I am uh, dissecting what one could call a corneal keloid almost but it's more of a dystrophy with a, some hyaline degeneration and make sure your dissection is smooth many of these patients if you can do a superficial keratectomy handle the cataract you can avoid the corneal transplant and in fact that's what happened in the other eye the fellow eye Hoping the same will repeat here, although we did tell her that we may need to do a transplant in this side later. It's always a good idea to handle the cataract in a closed chamber first and later on do the corneal transplant. I do not like to do cataract in an open chamber. And there you can see almost pretty good visibility. Or so I think. I then put my uh, incisions, stain the capsule under air bubble, and expel both with HPMC. My usual method. And look what happens when I start my capsulotomy. I am actually not able to see. And there is a gush of fluid that has come out. It is now impossible for me to see. So I wash off the fluid. Put in some HPMC. Go in with a Simcoe to aspirate more of that fluid because it is just not allowing me to see. In the background you have to remember she is a pathological myop. Not a good idea to have a rupture in this case. So I do what I think is a better option, I go ahead and do a can opener technique rather than trying to trace where my flap is and make a mess of the whole thing. I know this nucleus is pretty soft, so I am not too worried about the nucleus, however I would not like my capsule compromised may just making sure I can see the flap making sure I bring out the anterior capsular flap and I know now I have got it. Now under HPMC this all comes from SICS actually these moves I rotate the nucleus it is a can opener capsulotomy so I am not worried I rotate the nucleus out into the anterior chamber. Uh, I have been mentioning quite often that this is a pathological myo. The anterior chamber is extremely deep. So there is no problem. I bring it out into the anterior chamber and then it is a very soft nucleus. I just phaco the whole nucleus and block. There is no fear of any of those tags extending. If you do this in the bag, yes a can opener probably can extend and it is not a good idea because you cannot even see it. Uh, 
and there I've got the anti nucleus out. Now it's much more easy. Once the nucleus out, you can go with your bimanual and the periphery you can see everything, so you can happily aspirate the peripheral cortex. There is not much cortex as you know, this was this was a hypermature cataract, so most of it was liquid anyway. There are few fibers in the periphery which I don't want to leave. Clean as much as possible. Obviously, if the PC thickens, you are not going to be able to do a YAG as well. Once I am satisfied, as I told you earlier, we are going to be implanting a rigid PMMA lens, 5.2 rigid PMMA lens, taking my 5 millimeter keratome, opening up, I have to extend a little bit because this is a 5 millimeter keratome. And these 5.2 millimeter incisions seal pretty well, you don't have to suture them. However, in this case, I will opt to suture. trying to make sure it goes in the bag but this is a can opener whatever you do many of these lenses tend to come out in the sulcus anyway I'm just putting in my trailing haptic with the aid of a Sinsky hook make sure it's very well horizontally oriented and I just put one suture across after injecting my intracameral antibiotic and hydrating the wounds. Thank you.